Good evening. Beware, what I am about to tell you is a true story. It involves the premeditated murder of a young boy and how a very religious Ireland had no idea how to deal with such a heinous satanic crime. The only of its kind to this very day. This is a story of seven year old John Horgan. He is the boy in the attic. There's virtually no news articles on this case. Instead it has become something of an urban myth, but I assure you everything I'm about to tell you is indeed fact. The tale begins in Palmerstown, a beautiful upper working class area on the south side of Dublin on June the 14th, 1973. It was a sunny Thursday evening and at 8pm when John had not arrived back after looking for rabbits earlier that day in the nearby fields with his neighbour, his father Terry Horgan asked the well community to perform a search party and then at 10pm he called the guards. The guardie gathered as much information as they could but back then it would not be strange for a child to get caught up in a friend's house for dinner or some television but a guard had been informed that Terry was seen shouting at a member of the search party earlier on. It was none other than his neighbour, 16 year old Lorcan Bale. When approaching this matter Terry explained how Lorcan was actually babysitting John. It would have been highly unusual if Lorcan had any involvement in the abduction of the young boy. But little did they know how rare this case would actually be. Lorcan was a tall skinny long haired 16 year old who like most boys his age enjoyed getting up to mischief and listening to Rory Gallagher. He lived with his parents, his grandparents and four other siblings all of whom were highly devout Catholics attending church on a daily basis and in his household there was a strict Gaelic speaking only enforced by his father Kenneth Bale which was not so strange back then. What was strange was that there were horror stories going around the younger children of the community Stories that Larkin had strangled the dog to death outside a local shop while the owner was inside. And stories of a secret lion pit in the field surrounding the house which he used to clean bones from decomposed animals and then made abstract jewellery out of them. After an unsuccessful search party directed by Inspector John J. White, Detective Inspector William Reynolds, assisted by Detective Sergeant Jim Noonan, they asked Kenneth Bale permission to talk to his son. They wanted to ask him questions of where he had last seen John. His answers were not so satisfactory, exclaiming conflicting excuses like he had seen him wander off to another field close to the River Liffey, showing them false locations close by, but when Noonan noticed Lorcan's hands were fidgety pulling at sleeves of his jacket, he informed Inspector White and Sergeant Noonan. White told Lorcan, we have to search your house. Noticing a slight reaction, Noonan added, we will search it gallows to rafters. Surrounded by the three officers, Lorcan looked at the ground and said, I'll show you where he is. Noonan screamed, where is he? and Lorcan whispered, in the attic. What unfolds has conflicting reports from members of Garda, but the basic truth is Garda John unlocked him, opened the main entry to the attic at the top of the stairs, and found the horrific scene. John's naked body strapped to the rafters in a crucifix shape, surrounded by an elaborate altar with a communion chalice, the clock stopped at the time 5pm, there were candles in a pentagram shape, a broken bell, two tarot cards, one with lovers and one with the devil, a cloak, a red vest, bowls of powders and a saucepan of human excrement. When told of what was found, Terry and Anne Horgan did not react with aggression but merely said he was a gift from the Lord and only intended on having seven years. Larkin was arrested and taken to Luke and Garda station around 11.30pm and freely gave a confession. He even explained how he changed locations of the murder as the first scene was too visible. According to Larkin, while in the fields he forced young John to put his face into a rabbit hole and using the club he hit him in the back of the head, so hard it lacerated his skull cap killing him instantly. He then tied his arms up, legs, gagged him and put him into a large sack. Larkin was seen numerous times by local children struggling with the sack, even one child asking were you out getting coal. He got the sack back to his shed where he left the body. After he had his dinner he got the body up in the attic through a hole he had made in the fitted wardrobes of his bedroom. The attic was a shared space of the semi-detached house with the Horgan neighbours. He cut the boys clothes off and visited the attic a few times between attending the search party and watching television. He was convicted and pleaded guilty in November of that year where he was detained in St. Patrick's Institute of Young Offenders where he stayed until 1978, strangely being allowed out every second Sunday for dinner with his family. He then spent two years in open prison before being released in 1980. While institutionalised, 
there were bizarre stories of the course of Larkin Bale. Inmates he argued with, committing suicide, and also being allowed to paint matching pentagrams on a ceiling and the floor of his cell. This was Ireland's first and only satanic murder, and Ireland was not ready. The most Irish newspapers reported was that a child had been found in an attic having died by accident. The only true report was published June the 18th, four days later, in the Montreal Gazette, in French. It translates as youth charged with murder after a boy seven crucified. The article states the police found the boy's new and battered body with the help of tracker dogs. A police spokesman is quoting by saying, the body was nailed by the hands to the office rafters in a crude form of crucifixion. It was a pretty sickening sight. None of the evidence from the murder was bagged and processed as the guard actually believed it was not appropriate for him to deal with some consecrated hosts so they called Father Mackay to identify and remove the body and artifacts. John Horgan was buried in Belgraven Cemetery on Saturday, June the 16th, 1973, just two days later. However, no death certificate was ever produced until May the 24th, 2011. It is described as an administrative oversight. With so many questions, nobody knows why Larkin Bale murdered John Horgan. There were reports from being part of a sex occult in County Mead, having disappeared for four days at Christmas 1972, arriving back with no explanation to where he was. Or was John the start of a big ritual? As towards the end of June 1973, a canvas bag was found in one of the rabbit holes with pages from occult books and a handwritten page with the names of ten local children, one of which was John Horgan. The story of number six and seven of the Hollyville House and the boy in the attic still haunts locals to this day. And as for what happened to Larkin Bale, he is now a 63-year-old environmental services manager in London and regularly attends church groups and events. If you suspect anyone of being part of a satanic cult, you could always call the Gardaí on one 666 111 Good night. Thank you for watching. My main sources for this video was a broadsheet article called The Devil is in the Detail and also a book called The Boy in the Attic by David Malone. Thank you.